Would you like to know the best strategy for this year's fantasy football 2021 drafts? Well, you came to the right spot. I'm about to do a $25 buy-in, so you're going to get legitimate drafters against me for a million and one dollars to first place tournament on underdog fantasy. It's going to be a best ball tournament, but while going through it, I will let you know where I'm drafting from, the perfect strategy, and we'll go through that type of a draft that I personally enjoy doing, but also if I was drafting at the one spot if I'm not there, the beginning, the end of the draft, whatever it might be, how I like to go through it. You will basically know the perfect way to set up your draft for the first four to five to all the way through 18 rounds in this here video. So let's get it started, and as we get into it, take a second of your time and hit the like button. I'll be drafting off my tiers. If you're interested in those, they are down below in the fantasy football 2021 draft guide for this year and a bunch of other stuff in there to help you dominate your competition. 90 running backs, 50 tight ends, 50 quarterbacks, and 125 receivers ranked tiered top 200. It's a lot. It's in depth. No matter how long your draft is, you're going to dominate. Alrighty. So the draft is starting in about 40 seconds. You can see the timer above my head. I was generously given the 10 spot. So this is a 12 team half point PPR. This is best ball, but what we're going to do here is basically discuss what the optimal strategy is for my draft spot, the end of the first round, the 110. And then we can discuss as we go through at the beginning of the draft, right? So beginning of the draft, if you have one of those top three to five picks and the five spots are kind of where it starts to shift a little bit, but a top three or four pick, you're pretty firmly locked in to go running back. McCaffrey, Davin Cook, Zeke would be the big three in my opinion. Kamara is right there. Aaron Jones. I'm personally not as high on dead Derrick Henry for a half point or a full point PPR as opposed to non PPR. But those are your guys right around pick five to maybe seven or eight is when I start to say, OK, we should probably shift here to wide receiver. Why would I be taking the seventh best running back? And I know there's scarcity to an extent, scarcity, whatever you want to call it. Why would I be taking the seventh best running back as the draft begins at the and McCaffrey is likely to go one overall here at the spot in the draft where there's elite wide receivers. Why am I taking Austin Eckler, who I like a lot at the eighth spot overall when Devontae Adams is the number one receiver in football in there and Tyree Kill right there in terms of being the number two receiver last year and Stefan Diggs, right? All this stuff. I'm basically getting the worst of the running backs. So all the people in front of me just got the top tier running backs. I'm getting the worst of those. The people behind me are getting all the top tier wide receivers. I'm just sitting here with uh, the leftovers, if you will, at that position. So this draft is starting off running back heavy as it should. And Derrick Henry goes to the four spot, which is not the worst pick. Look, I, when I say Derrick Henry, I'm not interested in him. He's like my sixth or seventh overall player this year. I'm just not interested in him at his overall ADP of third off the board. But I'm picking 10th here. And based on this, these are sharper drafts. So your 80, like your fantasy leagues with your home leagues, people are not going to be taken as high as they are here, like a round difference, probably maybe even more because these people have been drafting since April on underdogs platform, a million and one dollars to first place. If you want to draft on this platform, it's a ton of fun. That big million dollar contest, a bunch of other contests on there. You can use the link down below. You get a free 25 bucks if you use the code Sal. There goes Travis Kelsey. I have yet to draft Ke Travis Kelsey in the first round. There goes Tyree Kill over Devontae Adams. So I'm now two picks away. And when this starts to happen here at the end of the round, Devontae Adams would be my ideal pick. And you can see Devontae Adams goes at the 1-8 there. And Devontae Adams or Tyreek at the end of the first round is where I ideally like to go. They both go. Aaron Jones is still on the board, and I do enjoy him. But we also have Stefan Diggs. So Saquon goes. So here at the end of this round, I have a decision to make. Do I want to go Aaron Jones, who I have as my number four overall player this year in fantasy? Or do I want to go Stefan Diggs and secure that top end wide receiver that's probably not going to be there by my next pick? Aaron Jones is somebody that I have a lot of faith in. Austin Eckler is still on the board, likely goes. I'm going to go Aaron Jones here because I don't think he makes it to the 10th pick all that often. Like his ADP in season long leagues is 10th overall, which is solid. And I would take him there a lot of the time. But most of the time in these best ball drafts, he goes earlier. So normally at the end of the t at the end of the first round, I'll go with a wide receiver if Devontae's there, if a Steph Diggs is there, unless a good running back falls like you just saw. And when that happens, I can then start Stephon Diggs, and my ideal next goal would be to go back-to-back -back receiver, a Metcalf, a Calvin Ridley, a Hopkins, and then we go from there. And you might be saying, well, what about the running back position? I understand that, but I don't want to be getting the worst of the running backs at every single spot. I want to always get the best available value play there. I'm not going into a draft with, okay, let's go three straight receivers right here. Based on general strategies, you can have these general thoughts on what you want to do, but you always have to be able to pivot. So there's a massive running back run going. So if I, I'm up next. I'm definitely going receiver now. So you can just see Stefan Diggs goes. He falls all the way to the 2-2. I was going to hammer him right there. 
It now comes down, and there's Joe Mixon, there's Najee Harris. Najee Harris is very tempting here. I mean, he's going to be lined for like a 350-touch season, if not 370. There's DeAndre Hopkins, there's Calvin Ridley. I'm going to secure Calvin Ridley here, and I like this. And now I could have taken Stefan Diggs in the first round and had Stefan Diggs and Ridley. Diggs almost falls back to me. So I start with a stud running back who I have as a top five running back and a stud receiver who I have as a top five receiver. I don't think a draft can start off any better than that. You get to get one of each position. You're not slacking in either position. You're getting top five, at least ranked talents in my rankings. That feels pretty good. So this is what happens here. When there's ever a run, and this is just a general strategy, you can see these green, these are all the running backs. Whenever there's a run, six running backs, five running backs going in a row, especially when it's changing into a new round, you know you're getting the worst value at that position. Now, Najee Harris was here, and so was Joe Mixon, so it's not a terrible player like it would be in the third, fourth, or fifth round or much worse player. But it's always a good idea to then pivot. Pivot to the next position because that, that's just offering so much more value than it probably would. So a lot more running backs are going off the board. Most of these tier two running backs are gone. Mixon is the best running back I have left. I still have one tier one receiver left in my tiers, and that is going to be DK Metcalf. So now we're chilling, right? We have a top receiver. We have a top running back. This next turn is going to be very important. And I personally am going to be looking to go back-to-back -back wide receiver here. I got my running back. I got my running back in the first round. I personally don't draft a lot of running backs if I get a good one. I'll draft three to four running backs. Probably four is the, is the right magic number, if you would, because in season-long leagues, I'll just pick somebody else up. I'm not trying to get four running backs in a row because the difference between running backs in the third and fourth round and the running backs in the seventh and eighth rounds, the Trey Sermons, the Javante Williams, the Damian Harris's, the Sony Michelle's now, there's not that much of a difference. Not that much of a difference at all between the RB22 this year and the RB36. So there's no reason I'm going to be taking one in the third round versus the eighth round. So that's just a lovely spot to load up on wide receivers in those rounds three through seven. Maybe you want an elite quarterback like a Kyler Murray, as you see A.J. Brown goes off the board and some of these stud receivers start to slide off the board. Darren Waller, the two stud tight ends, are now off the board. So maybe that's what you end up doing there. And that's what I'm personally going to do is go with a lot of receivers. I would Another uh, little tip for you is don't overload on uh, quarterbacks and tight ends early. So if you want to take a Kyler Murray in the fifth round, right, I would not then take a T.J. Hawkinson in the sixth round. Uh, if he falls to the seventh or eighth, sure, because he's a good value, but you don't want to be filling those positions all that much. And I know that T.J. Hawkinson can be a solid option this year, but when you're filling quarterbacks and tight ends, you're really falling behind at receiver and running back then. It's only delaying how late you have to start picking those guys, and you're just losing depth at those other positions. You might be winning depth with a TJ Hawkinson at tight end, barely over like a Tyler Higby three rounds later, two rounds later. But I don't think that taking two of those guys, a tight end and a quarterback within your first like six picks is probably not a good idea. One of them is fine if it's an elite option, uh, but both of them not so good. So right there, you see it right basically where he normally goes beginning of third, Keenan Allen goes. Justin Jefferson goes. I'm now seven picks away, and I still have my sights locked in on going back-to-back -back receiver. The problem is receivers are starting to run a little bit dry. So are the running backs. So like David Montgomery, Chris Carson, Mike Davis, those are not guys I want to be taking in the third round, let alone the fourth round. So Terry McLaurin, Amari Cooper, Allen Robinson, CeeDee Lamb, those are four receivers that I really like. One of them goes in CeeDee Lamb. I would love one of these three receivers to fall to me with six picks left. You keep going down the board and you see Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. These are other guys I have ranked in my tier two of receivers, but I would really like to land an Allen Robinson or Amari Cooper or Terry McLaurin. The problem is all the guys picking in front of me have like two running backs and no receivers. So I'm almost positive that these guys are going receiver here. And we have six picks until mine. So I want to start thinking early on. And J.K. Dobbins goes. So this guy starts three running backs. It seems, I mean, who am I to say a brutal strategy, but pretty brutal strategy, especially J.K. Dobbins in the third. I, I think that's one of the most overdrafted running backs right now. But you can see what's starting to happen here. I, I, there's three receivers I like, four that I feel fine with taking at this pick. I'm five picks away. So I want to make sure I have a security blanket for a next pick if I really need it. I mean, Kyle Pitts is still on the board. End of the third round, maybe a little bit too high for me. Quarterbacks on the board, none have been taking. I don't want to take one. I have a feeling one of these quarterbacks will go here. So I'm really hoping one of these wide receivers falls to me. There goes James Robinson. So now we're pretty secure. I'm four picks away with four receivers that I like. Unless those four receivers all go in a row right here, I feel really good about my next pick. And I'm not really concerned about bye weeks at this point. I've picked a running back and a receiver. It's not that big of a deal. There goes Allen Robinson at the 3-6. Uh, Terry McLaurin and Amari Cooper. I'm hoping one of those guys fall to me. If not, I feel completely fine taking a Cooper Cup and or a Robert Woods here. The third pick, though, it's a very, very big upside play if a Terry McLaurin or an Amari Cooper falls to me just because of their upside. Cooper Cup goes, so somebody that I wanted, but not one of my priorities. So now we just have to hope here that McLaurin or Cooper don't go. Uh, as long as one of them does, know, does not go, I have my firm option. There goes McLaurin. So now I want Amari Cooper. We're one pick away. I have a feeling that this is not going to work out for me. The four guys that I wanted are all going to go in a row. I have a very strong feeling. Uh, Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, Terry McLaurin, and there goes Amari. So 
Now, I'm, now, now in the draft, you're usually fucked at this point. There's guys I like on the board. Robert Woods is my best available here. This is just a brutal spot to be because running back almost seems like the move to go to a David Montgomery or Chris Carson. But again, they're not that big of a difference. So I'll go to Robert Woods here. This is almost as brutal of a spot as, as it is at the 110. Like, I ideally like being the 17 or the 18 because if you're the 17 there, you land Terry McLaurin. You land Amari Cooper. You don't have to take Robert Woods at the end of the third round, which is really not the greatest of third round receivers. So I don't like that move. If you're saying, why didn't you go tight end or or quarterback too early for quarterback, in my opinion, I don't want to take Mahomes when three rounds later, four rounds later, Dak Prescott is there and looks fantastic. Uh, Tight end, Kyle Pitts, TJ Hawkinson, way too early in the third round. No doubt about it. Kittle was gone. And then running back is just not a spot I want to be. Like Chris Carson and David Montgomery are not third round picks, in my opinion. DeAndre Swift is there, but these are fourth to fifth round running backs because when guys like Trey Sermon and Uh, Miles Gaskin and Josh Jacobs go in the sixth and seventh round. I don't want to be taking a running back that early, especially one that doesn't separate themselves in any specific way. I think Swift does separate himself from a receiving standpoint. A little bit of injury concerns as we record this video, though keeps me away from him. So now I'm on the board again, and I'm in a good spot because there's a lot of receivers that I like here. I mean, Julio Jones is falling to me here at this point in the draft, which is pretty solid as the wide receiver 20. Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson, who I'm pretty high on. Uh, At this point, DJ Moore is there, T. Higgins. I want to double up here. With these wide receivers, I'm normally getting a lot of Deontay Johnson here. Julio Jones is there. Chris Godwin. I think right now I'm going to go with Julio. Uh, Normally, I don't go Julio here. Normally, I go Deontay, but I've been getting a lot of Deontay, and they're very close to my rankings. I have Deontay number 16 overall. Julio is like number 19 overall. So we get our back-to-back receivers. Not the greatest of receivers that I wanted, but I feel fine with Robert Woods. Like Robert Woods being my wide receiver two is very strong. Julio being my wide receiver three is very strong. So, so far through this draft, we have our anchored running back, right? The first running back that we get in the first round, Aaron Jones. We got very lucky that he fell to us. My number four overall player falls to number 10. We take that all day. Comes back around and Calvin Ridley, who really has number one overall wide receiver upside this year, 30 plus percent target share he's going to flirt with, has a lot of red zone usage in that offense. He's there and we go right back to him. So that's a great start. The wide receivers that I got at the 3-4 turn, it is just barely missing a fantastic way to go, right? Like you could have gotten there McLaurin and and Cooper and then ran it back with Julio. That feels a lot better than the Robert Woods, but I think it's just more so a name value. Robert Woods from his first couple of years in the league with Buffalo uh, was always solid, but never like, it's like a Tyler Boyd, right? Always solid, but always buried by other guys. Never really got in the media, maybe a smaller city like a Cincinnati or a Buffalo. And then he gets traded to LA and he's popping off a little bit. So I'm fine with that. Now I'm four picks in. Now what do I do? Well, now it's kind of what is the best available on the board for me. I'm still not looking to go running back here with my fifth pick unless a glaring obvious value falls, which on the board right now, the best available running backs, and we'll pull it up. The best available running backs are like Daryl Henderson. No, thank you. Based on the Sony news, this guy falls so far for me. No, thank you. Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, Mike Davis. To me, Miles Sanders in the fifth round is not a terrible idea. I already have a running back though, right? If I, if I went four wide receivers to start, in the first round, if I would have went Stefan Diggs, then Miles Sanders in the fifth, or Mike Davis in the fifth makes some sense. But fifth round is still not an option for me. So I'm still looking here at wide receiver. If I really wanted to, I can start to say, okay, what at quarterback could I do? I have Calvin Ridley. I have Robert Woods. I have Julio Jones. Those are all quarterbacks that I can stack up later on. Do I want to just get a Kyler Murray? And maybe by stacking, I mean get a player from his team later on to double dip with the points. It's just optimal overall in terms of correlating your lineups even in season long, not just big tournaments. So that's something that I can start to consider. So there goes the first quarterback at the end of the fourth Mahomes. So that's good to see he's going a little bit later these days. Normally a third round pick, probably in your season long leagues, people based on the name value will snag him there. So we're into the fourth round now or the fifth round now. And Kyler is usually a guy that I start to say, okay, I can see getting behind the Kyler Murray. I want that guy in like the end of the fifth round. But since this like shoulder news that came out that Dak's not going to be 100% all season, I think it's a little bit overblown to be honest with you. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong, but just all the context that we have, he's throwing in camp. He would have played in a preseason game this past week. And if he needed to, according to what they said, he feels fine. He's playing in seven on sevens. I don't think if it was something that was like a season potentially scary injury that they would just shut him down, right? He's literally throwing in seven on sevens. So I feel okay with that. Um, And now he's falling to like the seventh round a lot of the time. So that's like a quarterback that it's hard to take a fifth round Kyler when a Dak Prescott's out there in the seventh round, or I mean, at the very late earliest, you can take him in the sixth. So Daryl Henderson, Miles Sanders, Chase Claypool goes. So these are some really strong second year receivers, right? The T Higgins, the Brandon Ayukes, the Chase Claypools that are going off the board. I wish I was drafting in this section. And there goes Kyler. I'm five picks away. But if you if you got like the 1-5 or the 1-6, you can still get the Aaron Jones start that I got. You won't get the Calvin Ridley. But you get with this fifth with this um, fifth and sixth pick, you get to get these second-year breakout players or these top-end quarterbacks, your first pick at them. Usually when you're towards the end of the draft, it's nice for those first two picks, the Ridley and Aaron Jones combo. But then you're usually burnt out after that. 
in my opinion, at other positions. Like, right, there goes my entire tier three. So T. Higgins, Chase Claypool, Odell, Judy Goat, there goes my entire tier three. My top 27 wide receivers are off the board. And now I'm like, okay, well, it's not the greatest spot to be taking wide receiver. It's not awful. I want to see what these next couple people do. And Jamar Chase goes, right? Like, if there's going to be basically at this point three receivers in a row, five out of six players are receivers. This to me is a clear indicator to pivot to quarterback. We'll see what happens though with these next two picks because the value at receiver right now, as Lamar Jackson goes, so you can see there's a smart move there by C. Moret in this draft. He goes and he pivots to quarterback. I'm considering here Josh Allen at the 5'10". I'm hoping he falls to me. So Mark Andrews goes, I think I'm going to go Josh Allen at the 5'10". Secure my, my top end quarterback. The running backs best available are like Mike Davis and, and Damian Harris. I like Mike Davis. I'm really not interested in grabbing him this early. The, the wide receivers at this point are Kenny Galladay, Robbie Anderson, Juju. I don't want to be spending a fifth round pick on those guys. They're not that different to me than some of the later guys. So we're going to go Josh Allen here. He falls to me a little bit. He usually goes to pick 50. He falls to 58. So that's what you have to do. Like, I normally don't like taking a quarterback in the fifth round, right? And now I'm not going to take a tight end, like I said the trick earlier. But the fact that everybody got scooped up, like if Odell Beckham Jr. were to fell three more picks to me at the 510, I would have taken Odell there. Same thing for Chase Claypool or Jerry Judy. In a lot of your home leagues, this is going to happen. Jerry Judy goes in the sixth and seventh round often. Chase Claypool goes in the fifth and sixth round often. So a lot of the times, this will fall in your home leagues. If one of those top receivers was there, I would have kept going receiver. I would have started running back, and I would have probably went five to six receivers in a row and then looked for my second running back um, and then go from there. But if a solid receiver is gone and you're not getting the best value at receiver in that fifth, sixth round, that's when I start to pivot to elite, elite upside at the quarterback position, which we just got. And now we don't have to draft. Like, if you're in your season-long league and I have Josh Allen, I'm probably not drafting another quarterback. If he ends up getting hurt, you pick one up. When it says bye week, you can drop your worst running back or worst receiver who's not really helping you. But at this point, I don't have to draft another one. In a best ball draft, though, like this, where you want to make sure you have a couple, you have two guys, I'm going to end up drafting one. So now I'm looking at this board. Kenny Galladay's here in the sixth. Not really interesting to me. Um, I could go Mike Davis here in the sixth and secure my second running back. I think that's what I'm going to do. So Mike Davis is going to be my pick here. So Mike Davis, I end up securing. So I feel really good about this start right now. We have Aaron Jones and Mike Davis. Mike Davis, who they cut JV on Hawkins, who their biggest comp, they cut Tony Brooks earlier in the preseason. These are backups. If you didn't know their names, you probably shouldn't. Many people won't. But their backups that were in Atlanta. Now they're not there. They cut Ito Smith, right? So there's nobody here. It's Quadre Olson who's been banged up. He's out of Pittsburgh. He's basically a fullback, if anything, uh, to be honest with you. And that's not no no disrespect. He's just a plotter. He doesn't really do much. He doesn't really separate. He doesn't really have any acceleration. He doesn't really catch the ball. So that's where I'm coming from from those regards and the potential sleight of hand at him. But yeah, I, I think that at that point, Mike Davis was by far the best available. He was a top 18 running back for him, a number 18 running back. So we end up going there uh, and we're just kind of taking what the draft board gives us. We're not getting the best value at these spots or maybe maybe the best value based on the strategy I wanted to do. But overall, like Josh Allen falls to us, he falls a lot. Mike Davis falls to us, he falls a lot. Aaron Jones falls a decent amount. Uh, Calvin Ridley falls a couple picks. So we're feeling pretty decent overall. And now these are the rounds when you're really paying attention, when you have solid tiers and ranks, when you're reading a couple hours of camp reports a day, that you can start to really take advantage of. I mean, round seven through like 12, seven through 14 is where you can really separate yourself. I have two running backs now, right? Two strong running backs, in my opinion, and Aaron Jones and Mike Davis. Davis more so because of the lack of competition rather than me trusting and believing that he can do something for a full year. Although I don't fully doubt that he can. Now that I don't really need a tight end, got my top quarterback, it's probably going to be the next four to five rounds of, of wide receivers for me. And now we're in a spot where a lot of receivers start to look good. I mean, now your rookies start to pop up. Devonta Smiths, right? Uh, you start to see Jalen Waddles go. There's some other options here in veterans and Juju Smith-Schuster, Marvin Jones and Corey Davis, who I think are some of the best options. We've been high on them all summer. If you've been drafting best ball drafts or earlier season long leagues, you've been in a really good spot getting Marvin Jones and Corey Davis in like rounds 10, 11, and 12. Now they start to go in round seven, eight, and nine. When people say never draft early, I agree for your season long league with 12 friends, not much advantage in drafting early. I mean, there's some advantage because you know more news about other players who are breaking out, but you know, injuries are an issue there. But when you talk about a big best ball league like this one, drafting early is as good as it possibly gets if you are prepared. And assuming you're drafting early means you probably are prepared, not just trying to throw away your money. So this is an 18 round draft. Right now we are in the seventh round. So my roster is pretty balanced, which I don't normally like to do. Allen, Aaron Jones, Mike Davis, and then I have those three receivers. Normally by this point, six rounds in, I have to like to have at least four receivers, but we have three solid ones, Ridley, Robert Woods, and Julio Jones. And we're about to load up. We're about to load up, reload the clip, if you will, the arsenal with even more receivers. Let's take a look at what's the best available on the board. And we can start to talk about like the beginning of a draft. Like if you're the first overall pick, you take McCaffrey. On that next turn, back-to-back -back picks, 
that's where you can start to hammer some top receivers. Like you can hammer at that back-to-back pick. Probably AJ Brown's not there, but a Keenan Allen and an Amari Cooper, a Keenan Allen and a CD Lamb. You can just hammer that back-to-back. And if I got a CMC right away, I would probably take four receivers in a row. My next back-to-back picks. Your next back-to-back with the fifth, uh, the um, fourth and fifth pick. I would just go out there with the fourth and fifth pick, and I'd snag myself a Chase Claypool and a T Higgins back-to-back, and Ayuk and a Chase Claypool. Right, those high upside second-year receivers. I think that that's a great way to start. Damian Harris goes here at the seven-four, starting to go about a round earlier since the trade away of Sony Michelle. I think that makes a lot of sense. Mike Williams goes up the board. So a lot of receivers going here, which is a downside for me because I want to be taking receiver. And this is the issue. Like if you don't get your receivers early, which I got three, so I feel okay about that. Everybody's drafting running backs early. And I only took one. Like if I would have went Steph Diggs, we'd be in a better spot at receiver. But everybody taking running backs early means that everybody in rounds five through eight is just going to start hammering receivers because there's nothing left there. The elite quarterbacks and tight ends are gone. The top end running backs are gone. So that's like If you're drafting later in a draft, it's very easy to just hammer. Like the eighth pick, seventh pick might be a solid spot to go with Tyreek Hill, to go with Stephon Diggs and Adams and just start with a wide receiver and then double up on one of those guys next. So I'm on the board right now. Uh, I'm looking at what's the best available at the end of the seventh round. At For me, based on my board, it's Marvin Jones and Corey Davis. So I believe I'm going to take Corey Davis here, the number one for the Jets, balling out in the preseason right now. He's my number four receiver. I feel fine about that as he's a number one in his actual team. Uh, Elijah Moore, I know he's been banged up during camp and hasn't really shown out in the preseason hasn't had the ability to play is not expected to play the third preseason game depending on when you're watching this uh but i feel good about Corey davis here because we're about to come back in a couple more picks with some other receivers that i still like brandon cooks michael pittman marvin jones we can double up yet again right here if you're curious running backs on the board i'll put them on right now this is what the board's looking like overall um you can see a couple quarterbacks are at the top of the board a tight end running backs are all basically cleaned out at this point darnell mooney goes which is fine i don't really want darnell mooney in the seventh round i like darnell Mooney's talent second year player uh, fifth round pick. I like him a lot, just not in the seventh round as a clear number two in his offense that is going to start with Andy Dalton, not great, and then go to a rookie mobile quarterback, which I don't want to say Justin Fields is not great, but rookie mobile quarterbacks don't usually, and just rookie quarterbacks in general, have the best track record of sustaining two wide receivers. So I'm on the board right now here in the eighth round, the 8-3. And uh, the top wide, top wide receivers I'm looking at are guys like Brandon Cooks, um, McCall Harmon's here. I'm not really interested. Michael Pittman. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, though, and I'm going to take Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones' ADP is now 99 overall, but I'm not picking for another, I don't know, what, 16 picks? Another 18 picks. So we take Marvin Jones and Corey Davis. They're both top 35 wide receivers for me, both top 33, actually. And we reload wide receiver one on his team, Marvin Jones. You might think it's Shark. It's not. Pretty clearly not based on camp in the preseason so far and the money that they gave Marvin Jones. Um, but yes, I think we have a solid start at wide receiver. My wide receivers right now, if we're starting this off, are going to be Calvin Ridley, Robert Woods, Julio Jones, Corey Davis, and Marvin Jones. Those are five wide receivers. It's not the best high-end talent, although I do think Robert Woods and Calvin Ridley and Julio can all easily be top 10 and Ridley can easily be top one. And I'm not talking one, I'm talking top one. So if that's the case, I think that's a pretty solid start. You factor in the quarterbacks, you factor in the running backs, but then you factor in the quarterback. Like Josh Allen takes you to a whole nother level. So... Now we're at a spot where you still have two running backs. Like, this is an 18-round draft. I have two top, top running backs. I don't really need to do more, right? If you're playing in a league that has two flex spots and only two starting receiver spots, fill those flex spots with wide receivers. You only have to roster two running backs. I already got those. My bench depth, I'm not too concerned about, right? We'll have a pre, we'll have the uh, season-long stuff. People want to go all crazy and draft, like, five running backs. That's cool when there's what, running back depth. But drafting Miles Gaskin with like your fourth or fifth pick doesn't really do much benefit for you when literally in the 10th round, you got guys like A.J. Dillon and Gus Edwards who have maybe not exactly similar roles, but Miles Gaskin in the preseason, week one looked really bad. Week two, he scored two touchdowns. So people are like, oh, Miles Gaskin's back. He still just played 50% of the snaps, split them with Salvin Ackman. He's in a backfield by committee. So is Gus Edwards. Now, Miles Gaskin is a way better pass catcher than Gus Edwards, but still it's a 50% backfield. So that's the concern with me is these third to six round running backs don't stand out. When you get to the seventh, a couple of Trey Sermon, if he falls, Javante Williams, if he falls, rarely does. Uh, Damian Harris, if he's there, they stand out. But then after that, it's like, okay, I'm just going to wait till round 10 or 11. So I'll probably go another receiver with this next upcoming pick here. So Marcus Callaway, a lot of guys are going right now. Jalen Waddell, the rookie goes. Uh, so Callaway is a pretty solid pick. He's cracked my top 50 receivers pretty easily recently. Um, obviously the preseason game with two touchdowns, the, the name starter of Jameis Winston just helps that overall offense. It's about time they name him the starter by far the best. I mean, he's the only quarterback in that camp. I mean, Ian Book, not the greatest out of Notre Dame. And then Trevor Simeon, they signed later. Like Trevor Simeon might be the actual second best quarterback on that roster. Um, and I guess that is a slight at Taysom Hill, who's a special teams player uh, and not much more tight end, right? Not much more coming out. Um, so yeah, not the greatest special teams player for the Packers. So 
We're scrolling now. We're 11 picks away. Wide receivers are just getting wiped out. Best available running backs, Gus Edwards, A.J. Dillon, Zach Moss, Tony Pollard for me. Sonny Michelle is a sleeper, though, that I usually like to get in the 12th round at this point. There's a real chance Sonny Michelle is the 1A in that backfield. Like, based on the new... Um, they originally were going to give a fifth and sixth conditional. The NFL said you can't do that because they didn't actually own one of the picks yet. So they have to give up, I believe, now a fourth round pick for Sony Michelle and like a seventh or fourth and then a sixth for next year. That's a lot of capital to not use that running back. They're going to use him. Uh, so Sony Michelle seems to me to be a fantastic option, and he doesn't go in these drafts right now. Like People don't know what to do with him because we're so close to the season. We haven't really seen any preseason usage out of him. We probably won't. We haven't heard any camp reports on Sony Michelle. We haven't heard anything from Sean McVay about how they're going to use him. So nobody knows what to do with him. But just based on the money, based on giving up two picks, and a fourth-round pick is not nothing, right? It's not two seventh-round picks. Fourth-round picks are actually decent. Like It's like a 50-50 odds of being an actual meaningful player for your team. Sony Michelle is going to be involved. Not to mention Henderson has a messed up hand right now. He's seeing a hand specialist, which is never great. So, yeah, I think Sonny Michel, normally you can get him in like the 12th round. We're about to hit the 10th round. I would like Sonny Michel to be my third running back in like round 12. And if that's the case, if, if not anybody else is thinking what I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to feel very, very good about that. So I'm going to try and get another receiver here as the best available tight ends of your curious Tyler Higby, Noah Font. I think that that is uh, not really what I'm trying to do here. Tyler Higby, though, at the ninth in the ninth round is, is pretty solid. I mean, we already have Robert... Uh, Woods, we can get Tyler Higby and then make sure we get Stafford. We can kind of stack this thing up with our second quarterbacks because Josh Allen right now, I don't really have any stacks with him. I would like to backdoor a Cole Beasley stack with him. That would have been a really sharp move if we were able to get Stefan Diggs with that second pick. If he fell one more spot, we would have taken him. And the man, that's that Josh Allen stack would have been lovely, lovely at that point. But I'm going to queue up some other guys from this team. I'm going to queue up Cole Beasley to try and get him. Uh, he, you don't have to take him yet. And I'm going to queue up Sony Michelle. So there's another thing, like know the guys that you kind of want to target. I'm going to be having on my tiers when I draft, I have three drafts coming up over the next three or four days. I'm going to make sure that I have like the guys that I definitely want highlighted in a different color. So I can make sure that I'm taking those guys early and often. So Cole Beasley is a decent pick here. I think we're still a round or two too early. He's falling like uh, literally a round and a half because he's not vaccinated, even though like 90% of his team is. So my guess is that he's going to end up being vaccinated, but we, we shall see. Uh, I'm on the board right now. Tyler Higby's still there, man. I mean, Tyler Higby at the end of the ninth round for a tight end is not bad. Um, but I do, mm, that's not bad at all. Attached to Matthew Stafford. I do want to continue to hammer this wide receiver position. But fuck it, we're going Tyler Higby. So Tyler Higby for me is a tier two tight end. He's right behind Logan Thomas for me. He's my number eight overall tight end. Um, I like him. I like him a lot. He normally, I mean, Tyler Higby's ADP. Let me see this. Tyler Higby's ADP is normally pick one pick 99 we got him at pick 106 so he falls like more than a half around i rarely see him here at the end of the ninth round so take higby we're now solved that quarterback and solved that tight end um quarterback matt stafford i don't want to take another quarterback that would be a very easy stack to do if this was a season-long league i wouldn't care about it but in best ball you always want to continue to stack um cole beasley's on my radar as somebody to stack up with josh allen after that, though, a lot of wide receivers left here. Like, Jacoby Myers is left. My top available wide receivers, Jacoby Myers, uh, Cole Beasley, Terrace Marshall, Brian Edwards. These are guys that I want to land at least one of them at my next pick. Noah Font goes. So, now you see some other tight ends going. So, I feel good about this. We're nine rounds through. About to be ten rounds through. And we have our quarterback. We have our tight end. We don't need to draft those guys. If this was a C-long league, I would not draft a backup for either. But since it's best ball, we'll draft a backup for them a little bit later on. So, Marshall goes there. It's a good pick. Uh, I'm looking at Jacoby Myers here, the number one receiver for the Patriots. Nelson Aguilar dealing with injuries all of camp. Myers did not come off the field in two wide receiver sets during the preseason. Uh, Jacoby Myers goes right there, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Next availables for me, I'm here at the 10th pick. Trace, uh, Trey Lance goes. Brian Edwards, Henry Ruggs, Cole Beasley. I'm hoping Beasley falls back to me for the stack. I'm going to go Brian Edwards here. I mean, 10th round, just so much upside for this guy. He was hurt last year, the beginning of the year, third round pick. They went back-to-back -back picks in the draft, literally in the draft, not just their draft picks. They had back-to-back -back picks, and they took Lynn Bowden, who later was converted to a running back, um, who and then was cut and then played wide receiver for the Dolphins. Um, but Brian Edwards was taken after that in the third round. So I'm going to go Brian Edwards there. Lots of upside, in my opinion. Uh, and that's what I'm shooting for in these rounds 10 through 16, 18, depending on how long your draft is. You want your secure pieces, your Calvin Ridley's, your Robert Woods, your Julio's, your Aaron Jones. Get those guys in the first six rounds, right? Your... Uh, Josh Allen's and then towards the end of the rounds like Brian Edwards versus Cole Beasley in terms of security and safety if you just want eight points a week sure go Cole Beasley if you want that guy that you're taking the 10th round to actually win you your league last year was Cole Beasley but I'm not going to bank on a slot receiver at 32 uh, to have a career year yet again I don't think he's still a bad player but when we're comparing Cole Beasley to Brian Edwards it's not even close in my opinion and that's with me having the ability to stack him up with Josh Allen's it's just not even close uh, I, I have to start considering a third running back 
Sony Michel is still very much so on my radar. He usually gets picked around pick 160, like the 13th, 14th round. I'm fine to take him in the 12th round because I value him that highly. A lot more uh, wide receivers are currently going. Jalen Hurts goes. Tony Pollard goes. Uh, best available quarterbacks for me are Trey uh, right now. Not Trey. He's gone. Trevor Lawrence and Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill, I could pair up with Julio, but I already have my Josh Allen, so I don't really want to get another quarterback at this point. Melvin Gordon. It's not a terrible idea, too, though. Melvin Gordon goes. I mean, we still have some solid running backs. Gus Edwards and Zach Moss are still on the board. Naeem Hines, Sonny Michelle is still on the board, right? Yeah, I mean, you can keep going down. Alexander Madison has a handcuff. Lots of guys out there. Melvin Gordon just goes. Russell Gage just goes. Uh, still solid receivers all across this board, though. Michael Carter goes. I don't want anything to do with Michael Carter. He's now all the way falling down to my wide receiver or my running back 47. This third Jets preseason game is actually on tomorrow. Based on me recording this, this video will come out tomorrow. I expect him to play a lot, maybe put up some numbers, maybe get some people excited about him. But him playing a lot in the third preseason game, the last preseason game this year, is not good news for him. So Ryan Tannehill goes there. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence continues to get slept on. My number 10 quarterback just always falls outside the top. I, I have a video coming out tomorrow, and he'll be featured in it. Uh, my favorite targets by each round. He always falls outside the top 10 rounds. Always, always, always. I need some water. When you're talking about yourself nonstop, a million miles a minute for 36 minutes so far, you, your throat gets a little bit dry. You need to fucking hydrate that shit up. The top of my mouth burnt. I had like a peanut butter and banana rice cake earlier, like right before this. And I think the fucking rice cake cut the shit out of my mouth. I got them, got a weak ass mouth, man. Shit's weak. Shit's weak. There goes Matt Stafford, Joe Burrow. Stafford has dropped for me. Why does, uh, quarterback 16. Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, all those guys over him, Tannehill over him. I mean, he just has no rushing upside. Today's NFL, like, unless it's a six point passing TD league, this guy, he's going to have to throw for 5,500 yards. Like, Aaron Rodgers had one of the best years of all time as a quarterback last year, throws for 40 touchdowns. Has some mobility as well. Finishes as the quarterback three, right? Because he just does not have the unlocked rushing upside like Josh Allen and Kyler Murray who are finishing ahead of him. Like Lamar has. Like Dak possesses. Like Mahomes possesses when healthy like you saw towards the end of last year. So we're coming back around on my next pick. We're actually pretty close. Four picks away now. Sony Michelle is probably somebody at the 11-10 that I'll start considering in the 12th round if he's there. Uh, but Cole Beasley here makes a lot of sense. We'll stack him up. Cole Beasley at this point would be my seventh receiver, and it'll complete a stack with Josh Allen if he can fall to me. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is also there if anything was to happen. I just don't like really taking 34-year-old Manny Sanders when I don't have to. I'll take the 32-year-old slot receiver that ages better um, and is also a fantastic red zone threat. Did not tear his Achilles two years ago. There goes Trevor Lawrence finally at the end of the 11th round. Fantastic pick by Eric, I believe that is, um, recognized from Twitter. Jalen Rager goes, so looking at the wide receivers, Cole Beasley goes, two picks before me, you motherfucker. And so does Emmanuel Sanders. You cocksuckers. God damn it. Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders go both right before me. I have nobody to stack up with Josh Allen now in this best ball, although Josh Allen's rushing upside gives him some standalone value, but not what we're hoping for. No solid right now, in my opinion. Let's do this. Zach Moss is gone. I mean, god damn. Let, let's just go Sonny Michelle here um, because... He's my best available right now. So we'll go Sonny Michelle at the 11-10, which is a lot earlier than his ADP, but the ADP is massively inefficient. So we get our third running back. Damn, man. So we're pretty locked and loaded on running backs. None of them share the same bye week. Damn, that was that was, that was was killer. I mean, Cole Beasley there and then Sonny Michelle feels a lot better having Cole Beasley as my number seven uh, receiver. There's still some solid receivers left. Like we're about to approach the 12th round. A.J. Green is somebody to, to, to target here. I don't want Hollywood Brown. I'm a little bit skittish now on Nelson Aguilar. Uh, just after him not practicing all camp so far and not building any connection at all with Mac Jones. That's a concern. Who looks like he's trending to start. And now Gabe Davis. I didn't want Gabe Davis because I don't believe in Gabe Davis. But he goes a pick before me just to add insult to injury with this Josh Allen stuff. I'm on the clock now. Jamal Williams goes. It's it's wide receiver here for me. It's Elson Aguilar. It's, it's Traquan Smith. It's A.J. Green. Um, I think I'm going to go to Traquan. I mean, here's the thing with Traquan. I love Marcus Callaway. I was drafting Marcus Callaway over Traquan every single draft. Marcus Callaway in the 18th round. Okay, the ADP rises to the 16th. Okay, the ADP rises to the 12th. Okay, now the ADP is rising to the 8th round to Marcus Callaway. And I think it's fair. He's the number one receiver on his team. Uh, Michael Thomas might not actually play this whole year, believe it or not. He can still be put on IR, and also he can also be traded. I mean, this team, he has clear, clear issues with uh, in terms of not getting the surgery earlier when he should have, posting stuff on social media, is disgruntled, whatever it is. I don't love Traquan. I agree. He's really done nothing in the league so far. But Jameis Winston can resurrect any body passing. I mean, Jameis Winston literally can do whatever the hell he wants. He can make Brashad Perriman like he did 
those final four weeks of the year into somebody who did nothing ever in his career. Just like Traquan, he makes Brashad Perriman look like one of the best receivers in football for a month of the season just because of how much he's fucking throwing the ball downfield and how much of a good arm he has, Jameis, which is underrated. Gus goes at the 12-6. Fantastic pick at the 12-6. So, yeah, I think that that pick right there is solid. Traquan Smith, I would never, I have never been, and I would never be taking Traquan if Marcus Callaway, you can get him at a similar spot or later. But the fact that Traquan now goes four rounds later than Marcus Callaway as the pretty clear wide receiver two on this offense with uncapped upside with Jameis being in the slot a lot more, we'll take that. I prefer Marcus Callaway, but at cost, Traquan Smith is becoming a value now because of how much hate people have been giving him. And I was one of those people, but no longer going in the 10th round now falling to the 12th round and if i didn't take him there he probably would have fallen a little further as my seventh wide receiver yeah i think i'm feeling pretty good about that one really good actually so we got three running backs i'll probably take one more running back with these next five picks we're 12 rounds through so i'm not feeling stressed to go another running back uh, i need another tight end and then a quarterback later so i mean we're, we're just going to keep rolling rolling through here with with wide receivers lots of good receivers left naeem hines goes at the 12 10 that's a really good pick he, it's a little earlier than he normally goes um, but yeah, we're just going to keep rolling through with receivers here. I mean, there's a lot of really good receivers still left on this board. Uh, AJ Green, Paris Campbell, MVS. Um, you keep going down even further into like the wide receiver 80s in my rankings, and you have some upside players in there. So I think this is a pretty solid build. So in terms of finishing up this draft, that's where I'm at right now. We're, we're 12 rounds through. I have Josh Allen. Feels great. Aaron Jones, Mike Davis, and Sony Michelle at running back. Feels great. I really only want two running backs. That's all I need to start in any draft for the most part. Well, two to begin with. And then wide receivers I feel good with. We were sniped a couple of times on receivers with Cole Beasley and uh, Amari Cooper, right? Uh, we sniped a couple of times, which hurts. But Calvin Ridley, Robert Woods, Julio, Corey Davis, Marvin Jones, Brian Edwards, and Traquan Smith. I mean, if you really want to say it, all those guys I just mentioned outside of Julio, AJ the clear number one there, all those guys can be considered number one receivers on their team. Brian Edwards is the X receiver. So is Marvin Jones and Corey Davis. Traquan right now is behind Marcus Callaway, I admit, but it's not like Marcus Callaway, the undrafted guy, is the definite number one. In the preseason game, he looked great. I think he is the number one, but it's not definite. So I feel good about this. Um, I think that we're good to kind of call it there. I mean, we've gone through 12 rounds. What I will do the next couple of rounds is basically go two more receivers in a row, get my fourth running back. I got a really good quarterback, so get a late quarterback and get a late tight end. If you're playing in a season-long managed league with 18 to 20-plus rounds like this one, I think this is a good strategy to go for. Get that strong running back early, and then if you want to, just go like four to five wide receivers in a row unless a fantastic quarterback like Josh Allen falling six picks in this draft or eight picks falls to you. So that's sort of the top strategy that I'm going for right now. Running back early, load up on receivers after that. Running back first pick, right? Load up on receivers after that. Unless you're at a spot like the 110 and Aaron Jones isn't there, then snag Devontae Adams, Steph Diggs, and then load up on receivers. Get your first running back in the fourth or fifth round. Get a David Montgomery in the fourth round. Get your first running back even in the sixth round with a Trey Sermon, and then just play the waivers game, but just be absolutely dominant at the wide receiver position. It also matters about your roster construction. I play in a league, my home league, that has four flex spots. Yes, four flex spots in a 20-round draft, 22-round draft. So I can start six receivers, two in the wide receiver spot, four in the flex. So sometimes I'll just start maybe potentially six receivers. And I'm on the board right now, and I've been talking to you all nonstop. So AJ Green has gone. I want to go receiver here. Let's see who's the best available. MVS is there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Can't believe your boy just said that on air. MVS in the 13th round is a guy I was getting often in the 17th and 18th round. And then I think as people are watching content more, he started to get pushed up. But makes sense to me. All right. The number two receiver on the outside, big play upside. Thank you for tuning into this video. We do these videos normally live, but I was traveling this weekend. I had some things to go to, wedding and all other stuff. So if you want to, you can hit the like and subscribe button. This was a not a mock draft because it was a legit draft. $25, a million and one dollars to first. If you want to play on this platform, check it out. Link down below. Use the code Sally. Get $25 to play with. You can check it all out. You can use my tiers, which are to the right of me, and you can check them out down below as well. Chance to get them for free in my draft guide this year. I know you're all drafting real soon. I mean, literally the season starts in less than two weeks. So I'd like to wish you the best of luck sincerely me to you the best of luck this draft season we got videos dropping on the channel every day the fantasy football 2021 playlist will be linked below and also pop up at the end of this video check it out roam around in there tons of content tons of valuable content here for free i appreciate you all i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all in the next one